Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome back to more Farthest Frontier in Gimlisburg, in what I anticipate is going to be the last episode for this series. Because at this point, we have explored pretty much all the content there is to explore. We are in a pretty good defensible position. We just survived a raid without really any losses at all, which is great. And we have built out every single structure in the game, including now the Apothecary Shop, which is now finally done. And this thing, apparently, you can see, does take a little bit of honey, plus some willow, plus some medicinal roots, and creates medicine. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to need medicine, if I'm honest. So far, our healthcare needs have been pretty easy to deal with, as long as we produce enough soap, which we have done. So, it's going to be nice to have this, but I'm also going to say it's not that big of a deal. The last thing that I really need to do to feel like I have completed this series is upgrade my town center to tier 4, and pray there's not secretly also a tier 5. All we are lacking at this point is population. We've already got enough large houses. And I can upgrade my trading center, though as we have discovered, that is bugged and results in the traders coming by with no goods whatsoever. Might, by the way, just be something, kind of a, an artifact from my current build, obviously. You know, the game went through an update. If I went through a new seed and started over, maybe it would have worked. Maybe this is just because I have an old save. I don't know. But regardless, we know we're going to turn off our trading ability, which is truly unfortunate. But I need it. So the first thing to do, get ourselves up to 300 population. Then save up all the bricks and all the planks I know I'm going to need. And then we upgrade the trading center and ba-boom! Tier 4, we say we have won the game. As much as you can win a game like this. Five new villagers being born sure as heck is going to help. I mean, honestly, we don't really need too much more. I'm building out one more market here because I feel like just a couple more houses is all that I should need. But of course, as we continue to upgrade to a large house, we're also increasing the population capacity just a little bit as well. So that'll help. What does it take, by the way, to get ourselves up to the next tier? Tier four built here. Yeah, okay. And furniture. Of course, furniture. You know, the thing that takes a whole stinking ton of planks. Yeah, I'm going to love that. Okay, well, honestly, once we get ourselves our first tier four town center, I say first, it's the only one we're going to get, um, we honestly might be able to just go ahead and level something up. It would help if I had a lot more glass. I can go ahead and start producing a bit more at the glass maker. Yes, I know we've been having a hard time getting enough sand. That has been an issue. Currently, our sand production is all the way out of them, y'all. But that's okay. That's okay. We can go ahead and assign a couple extra people. It's not like I'm not rolling it. Well, no, I'm not. I was rolling an extra laborers, but no longer is that the case. Uh, we can pull back on a bunch of the guards. I shouldn't need that many at this point because we just survived uh, against a raid, and they tend to wait at least a couple years before they send the next one, so we'll start gradually adding people back in. Oh god, what is going on with my poor wagon? It's going through a bit of a rave right now. Let's just go ahead and let's just let's, let's just put it out of its misery. Can you please move over here? Thank you. It was a little unsettling to the eyes. We are almost approaching 4,000 gold ingots in taxes, by the way. I mean, I don't think we're at a point where I could say, like, oh, we don't have to actually do any work anymore. We could literally just tax people and spend it whenever the traders come in. But we're getting closer to that point. Like, 4,000 gold per year, I mean, that's enough to buy out whatever stocks of wood and stone and clay these people can bring. Like, that's, that's worth a lot. Case in point right here. Look at all this. So we buy out 500 more lumber for 1,500, and I'm going to buy out another 79 uh, stone for 500. That's 2,000. We've only spent half of the money I just raised in taxes, and that's enough lumber and stone to keep me going for the rest of the year and then some. That's how potent this is. And let's offload, let's say, just another couple hundred pottery, and boom, that's another 2,500 right there. I mean, and I just bought a whole bunch more stone from this person, so now we're up to 569 stone in our bank. Like, you get the idea? You get the idea? We need to go to a manufacturing sector economy, man. It works. It freaking works. I had my doubts, but no, we are 100% making a profit. By all means, merchants, bring me everything you've got. I can keep up with it. I'm even going to build my first of these large statues, you know, me riding a horse carrying a sword. I mean, I assume that's me. Isn't there, like, some sort of, like, rule, by the way, as far as the horse, like, lifting up a leg versus having all four down versus rising up on its hind legs? Like, having to do something with a general, whether he survived or was wounded or was killed in battle or something like that? I don't remember for sure. I don't know what it is. All I know is it's glorious and everyone should worship me. No, this isn't a cult, but it could be. 
Did we finish up the last of the walls? It sure as heck looks like we did. Well, excellent. Because I just kind of invested a lot of money in getting some stone. So that's looking great. Now, here's something I would like to know. Is there a way for me to quickly upgrade these walls, or am I going to have the uh, unpleasant duty of having to manually upgrade everything? It sure as heck looks like I have to manually go through here and upgrade everything. Now, see, that I don't like. Maybe there's a button somewhere I don't know about. I'm always open to being wrong on these things. But if I'm correct, this is one of those things where a little quality of life improvement for an upgrade button or something would be great. Hey, there we go. We've already got the first stretch of some stone wall constructed. How much better is this than a regular palisade? 2,200 hit points compared to 1,500. That's not perhaps as good as I was expecting, to be honest, but, I mean, every little bit certainly helps. The more you delay them, the more areas you get off, the more you win, but... Yeah, I think I was expecting stone to be a lot more impactful than that. Hmm, okay. For now, I'm gonna focus mostly on reinforcing the areas where I know that the raiders have been keen on attacking. For example, down in this corner over here, for sure. And then up over here as well, these seem to be places they tend to hit a lot. So I'm trying to be at least somewhat sparing with my stone, since it's still a pretty valuable resource. At least until the next merchant arrives, you got anything good for me? Dang it. Well, maybe the next guy will. Mm, at least got some iron bars. Yeah, I'll go ahead and load up on that. Yeah, for a thousand gold, of course I'll buy all those iron bars. That's a really good deal. I'll even buy a few tools since they're on discount right now. Oh man, I'm kind of liking the trade game. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of enjoying it. I feel like I'm actually genuinely building wealth. I mean, yes, it's partly manufacturing and capitalism and stuff, but it's also, you know, mass taxation. So, I mean, yeah, it's a little, it's a little bit corrupt. I'm kind of hoarding all the stuff for myself, but that's fine. So, is there anything else? Anything at all that I can think of that I really want to do with this town? We've got defenses all the way across the board. We have plenty of food, and honestly, we're making enough per year that even with spoilages and stuff, we're looking absolutely fine and dandy. I don't think I need to expand this too much more. Farms are looking good. I've been slowly moving these toward the outside of the walls. I feel like that's probably going to be a better way to go. The orchards are looking absolutely beautiful. The cows are doing just fine. They are getting me hundreds and hundreds of milk uh, per year right now, which is translating into a couple thousand cheese at the end of the day, so that's not so bad. Uh, let's see. We've got everything we want over here. I could expand a bit more in this direction, but, like, with what? Hey, are those immigrants? Are those immigrants? Are those immigrants trying to get me up to 300 population? I think they might be. I mean, I kind of want to get that going in just a minute for absolute sure. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? No, I think that's really it. We really have got absolutely everything. Have you learned anything new about the fish, by the way? Not at all, because we're still at that 353 number. So, I mean, yeah, I still have absolutely no idea why sometimes the fish was going away and sometimes it was fine. Oh, we're just shy. Ah, oh, just barely. All right, give it another minute. We'll be there. Oh, yep. See, the fish counts back down to zero. I don't know. Maybe someone in the comment section has figured it out. Of course, I'm recording in batches, so if I'm not been responsive on some of that stuff, I mean, there you go. But for the most part, I've also been enjoying kind of discovering a lot of the game uh, without too much backseat gaming, you know what I mean? Not that I don't appreciate feedback and ideas, especially when I seem to be getting confused on things. That, uh, man, that really sets some people off. But, but, uh, I've been really enjoying myself just kind of exploring a new game and figuring out how all this works. And honestly, this is one of the things that's so exciting about Farthest Frontier to me. It's so fresh. Like, a lot of the mechanics are familiar. Yes, I have a g decent idea how to play this game based on my, my uh, many dozens or hundreds of hours of experience in this particular colony building survival genre. And yet it does just enough things different that I feel like I'm really rediscovering a lot of stuff. And that is so darn exciting to me. Do you know how rare that is? Again, this game has a long way to go. I don't think by any stretch it's done or perfect, but I think it's really quite good and promising and has a has a bright future ahead of it. I'm honestly looking forward to seeing where this is going to go. Now, we have finally reached that 300 population threshold that I was looking for. However, I also know it's going to take a lot of other resources, like my bricks, like some iron, and so on. So we need to spend a little bit of time kind of building up more of a stockpile of these resources, especially for that iron. Because uh, once I just demolish this, I have good reason to believe that I'm not going to... Oh, Blizzard. I'm not going to be able to um, trade again. So I want to make sure that I've got all the resources I need in place before I click this button. I don't want to jump the gun and then have to do it all over again. Y'all know how much I hate having to do things over. 
How is the iron mine doing way out over here? Uh, we are producing a bit of iron ore with six people, 150. It's not... it's not a lot. Um, does anyone actually make use of these temporary shelters? Because I'm not confident these work the way that they're intended to. You know, we've got some food, we've got some firewood and stuff. I mean, that person did just kind of walk over here and then do what? Maybe he does just actually grab some food. Maybe no one stays here, and I don't need to worry about the occupancy. But I should keep an eye on these guys and see if they go here and just, like, pick up some food and then get back to their jobs. Because otherwise, I'm not positive these temporary shelters are working the way they are intended to. Okay, here's an example right now. So we've got Nikephoros over here who's gonna stop by the house and he just got something, okay. Yeah, no, it works then. It's, it's not about filling it up. It's purely a matter of just, oops, I actually want you to take the whole cart with you, please, sir. It's actually just about having a uh, local food drop. That's it. And the carts automatically are gonna come by over here and drop stuff off. So you don't have to worry about people hauling it the entire way. Which is nice. Honestly, the cart AI seems to work in a pretty intelligent way. It focuses on delivering large amounts of goods the furthest distance possible. Which is great, because otherwise that would be very difficult to micromanage. Man, we do go through our wood pretty quickly, though. I was at like 800 in like less than a year ago. You're telling me I went through 500 logs in a year? Uh, if that's the case, that's actually a little bit scary, um, because I don't think I can harvest that much in a year, and that's as much as a trader is able to bring in a year, so if I am going to increase my needs any further than this, I'm kind of at a net deficit, I think. I mean, it wouldn't take very far for us to, uh, it wouldn't take very much effort for us to all of a sudden find ourselves having no logs whatsoever, and our entire economy comes grinding to a halt. Yeah... I mean, maybe 300 is kind of like the soft cap that you can look forward to in your population. Like, once you reach this point, anything beyond that, as a matter of just, like, expedience, is almost impossible to deal with. Maybe. And the reason I say that is, the more we're increasing our population, the more money we're getting. Yeah, and money I can use to buy a lot of things, but I'm kind of capped out based on what the traders bring, which is random anyway. Like, what happens if a trader does not come by with any logs this year, right? all of a sudden I could be in a lot of trouble. And if I continue expanding the population to the point where I would need two loads per year, well, that's just not gonna happen. So yeah, there, there kind of is a soft cap to this system now that I think about it, which is, um, I don't know if I would say unfortunate, but it does complicate things. Anyway, at this point, we do have the resources I need, so I'm just gonna wait for the second trader to arrive, make sure there's nothing I care about before I shut this thing down. Actually, you know what? Just to try and avoid any bug, on the off chance this is the issue, I'm gonna wait till both of the traders leave before I try to upgrade the trading post and then upgrade the uh, town center. Because remember last time we were in a situation where two traders were showing up with uh, their goods, and then after that the traders had absolutely nothing. I wonder if the trader being docked up caused some sort of a bug. I don't think so. That would be kind of weird. But, I mean, I've seen weirder things. Hey, look, only 332 logs. See, this is what I'm talking about. Maybe we don't have enough to survive now. And raiders have been sighted. Okay, where? Wowzas, they are all over me all. Okay, uh, we're gonna ring the bell, of course, and we're gonna go to the barracks, and we are gonna send our five soldiers off this direction. Now, we already know that they do tend to run out of arrows kind of quickly, and then they go charging in, but as long as they've got weapons um, and armor, it really isn't that bad. They decided they want to come over here. So they're splitting into two groups, one over here and one over here. Okay, they're actually hitting some of the palisades that I did not reinforce. I wonder if the AI is going to be any different. Do they focus on taking down the palisades and ignore the stone walls? Or did I just build these in the wrong place? Which is also totally possible. 100% possible, but I don't know. Uh, are we actually out of labor? No, we shouldn't be. Hello, let's go ahead and assign a whole bunch of these people. Why are all these people out of their jobs? Gosh dang it, the old people all died, didn't they? All right, so soldiers should be able to get into position pretty soon. That gate is taking a shellacking right about now. And yet, and yet, is holding together very, very well. Oh, somebody was not able to get into the gates in time. I am so sorry. All right, soldiers are here. Oh, they broke through the walls. What do you know? Okay, hold the phone, hold the phone. The, the, the raiders have decided that this is, in fact, a breach that they want to take advantage of. Oh, that's, um, that's scary. Okay, well, here come a whole bunch then. Let's see how well we fare. It looks like they actually might be trying to retreat right about now. Well, some of them are. No, maybe not. I've got no idea. I wasn't expecting this. Um, but it turns out there are actually 
They're actually dangerous still. Well, not anymore anyway, we killed them all. All right, problem solved. But you get the idea, holy crud. Yeah, stone walls, man, Um, we need them. This gate though, MVP, this thing lasted forever. At 1800 hit points, it's not even that much stronger than the palisade, and yet somehow, this thing is still standing. Okay, yep, stone walls, man. Uh, when you reach this point of the game, you need them. Aw, oh, man, we lost four people? That's unfortunate. Okay, let's see. Two villagers killed, then four. Okay, it's finally taking into account everything. So we actually were able to kill 38 raiders there, though. And they only knocked down two little pieces of fence. We probably would have lost these people anyway, just because they were unlucky enough to be outside of the walls at the time that raids came through. And frankly, that makes a lot of sense. It seems extremely sensible to me. That if you're outside the walls and an unexpected ambush attack hits, well, you're probably doomed. All right, the last trader is gone. Now is the time to once again upgrade the post. We have done this before, and we shall do it again. I'm really hoping that when we eventually have to dismantle this and return it back to its unupgraded form, we don't have issues with the tier four structure. I mean, I figure once it's built, it's up. No one's going to tear it down because they're unhappy. But I mean, I don't know. And once again, we're gonna have an upgraded trading center. It looks so cool. I wish I could just keep the dang thing, ugh. Anyway, all right. Upgrade time. Town center, tier four. That's a lot of resources, by the way. It's gonna be a very expensive upgrade, but it's worth it. I mean, I say it's worth it. I have absolutely no idea if that's true. Worth it in what way? What do we really get access to at tier four? There are no new buildings I can construct. There's just a handful of upgrades. Like, I don't know, upgrading the theater or upgrading some homes to tier four, those kinds of things. Is that very important? Probably not. Whoa, what happened to this house? It is abandoned. Why, why is it abandoned? That is a great question. Somehow this house lost a lot of desirability and I don't know why. Okay, well, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and salvage this thing and just try again. Did anyone else lose all their desirability? Oh, they did. Oh, they sure as heck did. What, what changed? Whoa, hold on. What changed? Did I stop providing like some luxury goods or something? Is it because you can't find enough firewood? It doesn't actually make a lot of sense to me because it says that there's like 79% desirability over here right now. Yes, this house struggled. We can build a statue or something and try to fix it. But like, why is this down? Well, now it's up to set. Okay, no, we need 85. No, 85 is the next upgrade. Well, then why did you break? Someone explain to me. Why did you get abandoned? We only needed, what was it, 65? Yeah, 65 to upgrade. I know, somehow this thing fell down to 64. I really couldn't tell you because it shouldn't have been able to upgrade in the first place. Whoa! Okay, a whole bunch of houses just marked themselves for upgrades. You know what that means? Da 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 da! The town center has been upgraded, and a bunch of houses automatically got flagged. Ooh, cool! We got like some sort of a crest up over here. Still, the three fishes, an acorn, some stripes. Nice. Please tell me you can't go to tier five. You can't. Okay. So when I said that we're basically beating the game today, I wasn't kidding. Um, nice. So all that remains really is one, find out if the trading center actually is still borked. Uh, two, upgrade some houses and see what they look like. But man, they're gonna cost me every plank and brick I've got. Oh, by the way, one little trick that I took advantage of and someone had recommended this. Um, so we did have some issues with our crops getting eaten by deer, right? Well, one little thing I did was just simply attach a fence over here. We just built it on this side and it's not like fully enclosed, so it's not like, in, you know, annoying or inconvenient, but it was just enough that the deer couldn't path directly into the farms. And while I don't think that I've like eliminated the uh, crops being eaten by wild animals, it certainly has been reduced a little bit. So if you're having a lot of issues with that, just place a fence, keep the wild animals out, works great. Oh, here come our first tier four houses. Look at them, the little manners. Okay, so I guess now we are able to have six people per house. Uh, it does use up furniture, which I don't love because that's a lot of planks gone, but okay. And some glassware too. Yeah, gotcha, okay. Well, I mean, they look nice at the very least. Um, it's year 40, by the way, 40 years we've been playing this game. And that's all it took for us to create a thriving little metropolis far away from the tyrannical nobles who tax us all to death. Yeah. Um, I don't know if these guys are gonna provide a lot more in taxes. I would love to be able to see that detail from the house itself to kind of get some sense of just how valuable it is 
to allow this. If you find yourself in a situation where like, I don't think the manor is worth it, and I really wish these things would stop upgrading, all you gotta do is just click this little button at the top right, boom. It just stops them all from upgrading, if you care about things like that. Hey look, a trader is on the way! Can this trader deliver goods, or am I gonna have to do a stupid and shut down the trading center again? Little more, little more, and we're docked up. And, oh, wait a minute! Hey, the trader actually has goods! Okay, okay, maybe I did bork it before then by just having these guys in here. I mean, we already saw a graphical error, so that might have been all it was. Awesome! I can leave the trading center up and running! Oh, that is such a relief. Now, personally, one thing I think would make the trading aspect of this game a little bit more bearable is if every upgrade of the trading center, or in this case, I guess it's just one more, didn't just give you more specialized traders, because I still have no idea what that means. They still seem to sell roughly the same kind of stuff, maybe like one or two less options, and that seems worse rather than better. Unless the prices are better, but I, have, I haven't had a chance to compare with that. Anyway, it'd be nice to see a third trader come by per year. Then at least I'd feel like even if there's a certain element of randomness and I'm dependent on trade, I've got one more roll of the dice. So yeah, better traders, more specialized traders, and also a third trader. That would make this building really worth it in my opinion. Whole bunch more villagers has graduated from school. We are now sitting at 75% education. That's all looking great. And the manors are building themselves out. I've got a second brickworks up over here so I can produce more of these bricks and make sure we're getting these things upgraded as fast as possible. How is the um, the market square looking? More people want to join. Um, honestly, yeah, sure. Okay, that's fine with me. We're making 766 gold over here and as opposed to 672. So it is better... It's just not a huge difference having the manners. Yeah, that's a lot of resources for, as far as I can tell, not a lot of gain. So I'm not a massive fan of that, but okay. Anyway, guys, um, I think that I've officially accomplished everything that I wanted to in this game. We have seen every single feature that they have to offer, I think. And uh, we've got a pretty good feel for what this game entails and maybe also where it's going to go. I think there's going to be a lot of different quality of life improvements, some UI updates that are going to be coming down the pipe at some point. Examples might include uh, faster ways of upgrading lots of different buildings and stuff like that. I do think that we're going to see some rebalancing as far as trade, especially as people catch on that it is a major aspect for the game. But I also expect we're going to see some rebalancing as far as resources and map generation. We've already seen that once, and it's pretty penalizing not to have access to early game resources. But they've been fixed that a little bit, and I think they'll continue to build. Overall, I had a lot of fun with this. This was a fun experience. I really enjoyed my time, and I hope you guys did too. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell to be aware of my future content, and I will see you guys next time.